With the American cuts of both Godzilla and Rodan having proven quite a hit on American television, ABPT Pictures, the film division of ABC, requested Toho to make a film for television. With this in mind, producer Tomoyuki Tanaka set out to make a by-the-numbers monster movie on the cheap, one that would satiate the simplistic desires of Western audiences. However, ABPT Pictures backed out during production, leaving Toho no choice but to continue forward and release the film in Japanese theaters instead. And so, despite the involvement of director Ashiro Honda, special effects director E.J. Tsuburaya, and composer Akira Fukube. The resulting film, Varen, ended up being a substandard monster movie, a kaiju flick that has almost nothing of interest to say or show. When two scientists end up missing while on an expedition in Iwai Village, further investigation reveals a massive prehistoric reptile living in the nearby lake. The creature, called Varen, is awoken and destroys the village, and following a failed attack by the Japanese Self-Defense Force, it takes flight and begins heading towards Tokyo. With Varen fast approaching, Japan has to think fast and utilize every strategy at their disposal before the monster lays waste to the nation's capital. <laughs> Varen is an often overlooked entry in Toho's early kaiju movies, and upon first viewing, it becomes extremely apparent why that is. Aside from being a clear step backward in presentation, it has none of the energy or charm of even the most mediocre films that came before or after. It is as basic a monster movie as they come, with the script existing only as an excuse for set-piece moments and nothing more. This necessarily wouldn't be a problem if those moments were exciting, but they are not, and without anything else going on around them, the movie becomes a chore to get through. <laughs> It certainly doesn't help that the human cast of Varen is utterly superfluous to what little of a story there is. No attempt is made to give any of them any sort of characterization, and so instead what you get is blank slates that fill the roles you expect in a monster movie. Scientists, military types, journalists, they're all here, but are given nothing to do. The closest thing the film has to an actual character is Yuriko, played by Ayumi Sonata, a reporter and the sister of one of the missing scholars. This could have provided some human emotion to the story, but is given no development at all. In fact, in fact, she, along with the main human hero Kenji, drop out of the film halfway through when it focuses on stopping Varen. Human characterization was clearly not the focus when making this movie, which is no surprise given the troubled production and its intended audience. <laughs> Not everything in Varen is uninspired, though. Varen, while clearly meant to be a Godzilla clone of sorts, is actually a well-executed monster. The suit is very impressive for its time and budget, and the black and white helps hide any imperfections there might be. But by far the single best thing about the film is Akira Ifukube's score. While the film is lacking passion for most of the creatives involved, his score is incredibly memorable. There are a lot of tracks here that would go on to become some of his most well-known, and would be reused in many future Godzilla films. If Varen feels cheap and rushed, that's because it was. More so than any other film Ashiro Honda and his crew made, this was a job born not of passion but of business, one that fell through and thus forced their hand to mine something of value out of an unfortunate situation. Given this knowledge, it's hard to fault the film too much for what it doesn't do. This was meant to be a made-for-TV monster movie for American audiences. They weren't trying to make something the slightest bit intellectually curious, and you can tell. It's got a decent monster, the special effects aren't the worst, and the score by Akira if Fukube is really good, but aside from that, there isn't much to see here. It's not offensively bad, just mostly boring. If you're a kaiju completionist, check it out at least once, but for everyone else, you just might want to skip it. For more reviews and opinions on all things kaiju, subscribe and stay tuned to Up From The Depths.